Okay, welcome to color. Everyone comes to color with their own personal tastes and cultural feelings about colors and personal associations and histories about color. So color is a really complicated thing for artists to try to understand and control and use wisely. Um, some artists never master good color use in their work. So let's get started with the basics. Only interested in the basic color theory that most artists use, okay? There are two other color theories, which we will not be discussing in this classroom. They have to do with uh, print, printing, actually, for like magazines and newspapers. The three primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, and they are the foundational colors for all other color, okay? For our class, black and white are not colors. They are values, okay? Try to remember that, okay? Red, blue, and yellow. They cannot be mixed, they cannot be made. Those are primary colors. The secondary colors come directly from the primaries. So you mix red and yellow together and you get orange. So that's one secondary color. The three secondary colors are blue, excuse me, green, purple, or violet, and orange. Okay, those are the secondary colors. Red and blue make purple, yellow and red make orange, and blue and yellow make green, okay? All right. Here's a basic color wheel. Notice that the yellow and the purple sit across from each other. Notice that, you know, everything sort of blends together smoothly, okay? From one start, yellow to green to blue to purple to red, etc. There are light colors and dark colors that are made by mixing either color or black and white with those colors, all right? And this, when you're using black and white, you're using what's called a tonal color palette to lighten and darken your colors. So on this slide here, you see the blue circle that's in that black square and the yellow circle is in that black square and the red one, etc. When you add white to that blue, notice it gets a little bit lighter and a little bit more white, a little bit lighter and lighter and lighter until it gets to white. If you add more black to that basic blue, notice it gets darker and darker and darker. Same thing happens with yellows and reds. But when you look at the, all these colors combined, they look kind of leaden, don't they? Kind of dead, not very vibrant colors, which is why no artist really relies on what is called a tonal color palette, just using black and white to lighten and darken your colors. That's it. Um, matter of fact, in most painting one classes, you will not, we'll, we won't be allowed to use the black at all as a paint color. Paint value. This is what we call monochromatic color use monochromatic mono meaning one chroma is color okay so monochromatic color use is using one color with black and or white so mr tansy here chose blue and he only lightened and darkened that color with black and white okay on purpose he wants it to look like an old photograph from like an old Oh, like an old cyanotype or an old a newspaper sort of uh, photograph on purpose, okay? That's what's called monochromatic color use, okay? There are some other color combinations that are part of the basic artist color wheel, and one of them is called complementary color. There are three pairs of complementary colors. They sit opposite each other on the color wheel, but they do much, much more than that. When they are at the right intensity and right strength and value, they can vibrate against each other. They can shake. They can also clash, but they can also work together beautifully. The three pairs are yellow and purple, red and green and blue and orange, okay? Now, what happens is if you want to darken your yellow and you don't want to use black because it makes it look all sad and kind of dead, you use a little purple to 
darken it and you will see how beautifully it darkens without what we call in art killing the color they are literally frenemies this is complementary color use in action it's a church uh, painting called Twilight in the Wilderness and what helps make that orange in the sky the clouds there glow so much is because it's surrounded by its exact complementary opposite and that's that blue and those darker sort of grays that you see in the sky that literally is blue darkened with a little bit of orange and orange darkened with a little bit of blue you're seeing those colors being used together and you see how it makes it glow in the middle register of the painting where you see sort of where the yellow is and that purple mountain back there that sort of very grayed out purple that's a complementary color use and of course in the front of the landscape here the actual ground and mountains and things those browns and reds and greens they're all complementary colors there because when you mix red and green usually you're going to get sort of a brownish color okay. and uh that's complementary color use the last part of the basic color wheel is called analogous colors these are closely related color families bounded by two primary colors okay so on this slide here yellow and all the oranges you see going to red that's an analogous color family they blend together easily back and forth from each other. They work together very harmoniously, but they do tend to kind of be boring and expected. Okay, so people use it for different reasons and things. I, I use analogous color for sure, but they are bounded by two primaries. So there are three basic analogous color groups. There's red and all the possible purples going to blue. See how it's bounded by two primary colors? That's it red and all the possible purples going to blue there is yellow and all the possible oranges going to red yellow gold orange red orange red red hot orange red okay and then there is the last one is yellow and all the possible greens go, going to blue okay those are the three analogous color families in this Mary Cassatt painting, you'll notice the most of the of the painting is in one analogous color group, yellow and all the greens going possible to blue. It's almost in the entire landscape. It's in the gentleman's garb. It's in the boat. It's in the sail. It's in the landscape, etc. Okay, it's even in her, in the lady's hat and the baby's hat. But what color? What makes the lady help be? Sort of the focal point, yeah, the lady and the baby in the piece. Well, she's not in the same analogous color family, is she? Her dress isn't. She contrasts, the, that reds and purples, they contrast against the rest of this landscape. There are things such known that we can play with the eye when we talk about color. And one way is, known is optical color, which I'll talk about in a minute. Another way is through an association to what goes on in nature called color temperature. When you think of blue, you think of cold, you think of ice, you think of water. So blues, greens, purples, they all tend to be what we call cold or cool colors. And when you think of red and yellow, you think of hot things. Fire, sun, all that kind of thing. Okay, they think of warm and hot things. So yellows and oranges and reds they all tend to be what we call hot or, or warm colors okay notice how this is what makes color complicated in these three rectangles you see the same believe it or not that is the same peach color in each one of those rectangles but because it's surrounded by a different color it changes the color that's inside that peach square just a little bit and that's what makes color use so complicated because the most you start painting one color and you put another one next to it it changes it what if you have 16 colors next to that one it changes that so imagine how complicated color can be 
talk about color temperature. Okay, optical color. If you're sitting up close and you see this on the computer screen, you see those little red and blue dots on, on that side. And you see the yellow and, and, and red dots on the other side, those, you know, that entire big square of them interchanging, right? But when you step way back from your screen, you're going to see that blue and red square of little pixels. It's going to make purple because your eye is going to actually do the mixing for you. That's called optical color. Artists use different colors next to each other sometimes, and you, in your head, your optic nerve do the mixing for the artist. That's called optical color. Your mind, your eye does the mixing of two colors that aren't really there. This is the what George Surratt invented. This painting style is called pointillism. And it's just nothing but dots of color. There are no brush strokes as we you would think of you know painting brush strokes. These are just dots. Dot, 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 dot. And when we step back, we mix it with our optical nerve. This is what it looks like up close. See the dots of pure color, but when we step back, we see the full painting and the illusion. That's called optical color. And sometimes artists have certain associations with color that are personal just like we have color associations my favorite color is green for some things or white for other oh well that's a, I'm sorry that's a value but I mean you know black and oh that's a value too oh so greens maybe and you know maybe I like pink and I definitely love uh, lavender that kind of thing but that's a personal choice this is Vincent van Gogh's painting called the Ru the night cafe Look at this place. Does it look like a jolly joint? A happy place? Well, maybe not. <coughs> not to me, anyway. Everyone that's in it looks a little sad. A little bit like they're nursing a hangover already. And those weird globe lights that are hanging over the bar in the whole restaurant. Um, the weird guy with no legs underneath him that's standing next to the pool table. Very with that lab coat, a little, a little scary. Okay, yellow for for Van Gogh was um, not a positive color. Personally, he felt that he had problems with color. It was very intense for him. It had a lot of personal associations dealing with uncomfortable feelings and lots of anger and lots of passion. Not all anger, but a lot of passion too. This was not a positive color for him. So I think he's telling us that, that, that this color, that this place was not a happy place for him. And it was maybe a happy place to go to either. Well, it doesn't look very happy to me. I would want to go to the night cafe. But this is his friend, Paul Gauguin. His painting called The Yellow Christ. Why is Christ yellow? He's not only just yellow, he's glowing. He's painting up close, being surprised that that outline that you see around the Christ is really a dark purple, which helps intensify that yellow, its complementary color. But what is yellow? What is this yellow glowing Christ doing in the French countryside? Well, this is the French countryside that would have been a contemporary or part of, of Gauguin's life. This is what he would have painted in 1889. This is what he would have seen on the landscape, okay, in, in France, okay, where he was. Of course, Christ was crucified there, but what I think he is saying is that Christ is with us today everywhere. Okay. And for, yet, for, for Gauguin, guess what? Yellow is a celebratory color. For him, this is a color of joy. So rather than looking sick and kind of like he's got jaundice, for, for Gauguin, this was a celebratory painting about how Christ and Christianity is with us today, everywhere in the world. It shows yellow, 
because that's his happy color. And this one will probably be an, a study guide possibility. This is Picasso's La Vie. It is from what is called his blue period because he did these mostly monochromatic uh, paintings all in blue, using blue as the base color because they sold this tragic tale. Here, color has got an emotional feeling to it, okay? Blue, when you're feeling blue, you're feeling sad or depressed. And this is a sad story, which we will go into later um, in the during your study guide or later on in class, okay? Blue has a sad association, which is why he chose for this sad story of his friend's suicide after his mistress leaves him, okay? Which is why I've got almost a monochromatic color palette based on blue. Just like red, usually you think of danger, love, passion, anger. Pinks you have certain emotional associations with, maybe. Okay, those sometimes color has an emotional association that everyone kind of understands. That's it.